Having been exposed to the torment of hell, as well as individual statements through interviews, the Lord sounded a serious warning to me. He said to me, You are bought here twice to know and to understand that hell is a reality, and its fire will never quench, it burns forever. But my people, who are redeemed with the blood of my only Son before the creation of the world, are joking with it. Christians are taking for granted a place that can never be filled up with souls. My people have refused to understand that second per second, souls that tasted the truth are going to hell. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. They lack the knowledge to detect the danger that is ahead of them. They live as they like. The world is ruling my people rather than my people ruling the world. The church which is the body of Christ is welcoming sin. Sin has dominated my church from the pulpit to the pews. Nobody is innocent of intentional sin. Everyone is guilty, some of the ministers of the gospel are a disappointment to me, says the Lord. They practice cultism, they are diabolic, they mix cultism with Christianity, deceiving the naive and innocent believers whose wishes were to please me by faith. But I will be merciful to whom I want to show mercy and those diabolic gospel ministers will not go unpunished. Those ministers who trusted totally on the Lord their God will experience positive changes in their lives. The Lord warned me and said, you have seen what happened to people as a result of their mistakes. If you don't want to be like them, go back to the pattern of lifestyle I gave you and don't ever compromise your faith for any reason. Although you will be laughed and reproached but don't mind and any day you turned aside to do as other ministers of the gospel are doing, you will be like them in hellfire because much grace has been given to you to escape hell. Be vigilant. Watch and pray. The days are evil. Now is the amendment time. Amendment is worth doing now than to regret later. I will tell you what I mean. A driver wrote on his vehicle, delay is dangerous, in other words, a delay is risky. The preacher in Ecclesiastes said, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, Ecclesiastes 1, 1-2 KJV. As the preacher has said, there is time for everything. You may have been living a life that is contrary to the Bible thinking you are on the right track. You may have discovered, after reading through chapter 2 and chapter 3, that your life is sinful to God, and you ask, what do I do? The answer is simple. Jeremiah has an answer to your question, therefore now amend your ways and your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will repent of the evil he hath pronounced against you. Jeremiah 26, 15 KJV. Beloved, you have to turn back to God and ask Him to forgive your sins. In Proverbs, we have this statement, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Proverb 28, 13 KJV. When you turn back to God, you shouldn't keep silent. You ought to confess your sins to Him. If you keep silent, it means that you are saying that you don't have any sin. And John says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 1 John 1, 8-10 KJV. So, when you have confessed your sins, God will forgive you. As your sins are forgiven, there are five things which you must do. These five things will help you in this heavenly race which is listed below. 1. Knowing how God deals with you. 2. Know what God has called you to do. 3. Mind your words. 4. Mind your relationship with others. 5. Control your feelings. Knowing how God deals with you. God has a way of dealing with everybody. The way he deals with you may not be the way he deals with me. God's dealing with mankind cannot be questioned because he does his things the way he is pleased. As our faces are different, so God our maker deals with us differently. The reason God deals with us differently is that our destinies are not the same. He knows our beginning and end. He can tell the end even before the beginning of a particular event. He understands our temperaments as well as our behavioral attitudes. So God in his pleasure has chosen the way to treat each of us. And God said, Esau I hate but Jacob I love. Romans 9:13 KJV. He hated Esau when Esau did not do anything wrong to him. But he loved Jacob who was a dishonest person.
That is God for man, so we have no right questioning him why he deals with his creations differently. Having an understanding of how God deals with us will help us run our race faithfully. And how God deals with us will help us run our race faithfully. And when we understand that God has a specific way of dealing with each of us, we won't be doing things the way people around us are doing. But we would be doing them the way God wants us to do it. Let it be registered in your mind that, the fact that Mr. Brown did evil and went unpunished, does not mean that when you do the same evil you will go unpunished. Your relationship with God and Mr. Brown's relationship with God is not the same. There is a difference. So, it is expedient we find out how God deals with us in order to know whether we are heading to success or to disaster. Some Christians did not find out how God deals with them. They followed the pattern of other ministries they envy or like and they were unable to find out whether God was pleased with them for using that pattern. Those ministers were interested in the pleasant things people were saying about them and not what God was saying concerning their ministerial pattern at that moment. They abandoned what God has called them to do and were doing what gave them joy.